Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today are some military survival knife tips and tricks and skills that we can employ in the field. Stand by. Now, everybody knows the basics when it comes to survival knife characteristics and skills. That first one, obviously, is going to be that 90 degree spine that we can use as a striker for our ferro rod. Number one, fire starting tool out in the field besides a lighter. And we know that we can use this ferro rod in combination with tinder to get man-made tinder lit very quickly too easy we can also use that knife and that 90 degree spine for fat wood everybody's favorite that fat wood creating those shavings a nice big pile along with that ferro rod using natural tinder off the landscape to get fire going creating a long lasting flame to add our fire material onto and then of course that full tang knife being important because we use it for processing large sections of material like batoning in with to process big sections and make them into small sections for firecraft out in the field. Now let's use our knife to harvest material from the landscape to recreate portions of our survival kit that we should have with us, in this case, cordage. We can take our knife and actually harvest green bark from a standing section of tree and peel it off leaving the tree safe without killing it and then taking that bark and using it for cordage once we have that bark peeled off now we can move back to camp and form it into usable cordage once we get back to camp the very first thing we can do is start to bend and play with that bark and by bending it we can actually break away the outer bark we can easily do this with other sections of material depending on the species of tree or shrub that we take the bark from and we can even use our knife to scrape away that material on the outside but by forming it and bending the bark, we break off that bark. Once we have our three sections complete, we find the ends of our three section, put them together, create a simple overhand knot, tying our bark together, and now we're ready to weave. Once we're ready to weave, all we have to do is create a simple tent peg or a stake from the landscape, taking our knife, creating a sharp end, and then hammering that stake into the ground to give us a post to work from. We then take our cord, and with the section that's got the overhand knot on it, we just put that stake in between one of the two strands and then we can begin weaving. All we're doing here is creating a simple French braid style weave where we take the outer strands as they overlap and continue to go inwards and overlap each other creating that French braid or that weave that we have for our cordage. This is going to make it incredibly strong and usable cordage for us. Once we get to the end and we're satisfied with our weave, we create another overhand knot and now we have a section of rope or cordage that we can use for a variety of purposes all around camp and over terrain. Of course, no cordage test will be complete without putting a little bit of body weight behind it. Here we can take our cordage that we just made off the landscape not five minutes ago, sling it over a tree and use it for some field PT, doing some pull-ups and some knee raises out of the field. Good to go. If you like that commando bark cordage pull-up bar for your field gym trick, you're going to love this next trick because we're going to use a cell phone. It's just like bark except completely different. We're going to take that cell phone, pry off the back with our survival knife, and grab the battery inside. The battery can be fully charged or it can be empty. If it were fully charged, we could use steel wool by touching steel wool to the positive and negative terminals of the battery, igniting that steel wool. In this case, we don't have steel wool, so we're going to expose the lithium of the battery to oxygen, forcing it to oxidize and combust, giving us a chance to start fire. All we have to do is put the battery down on the ground, take our survival knife, puncture the body, exposing that lithium to oxygen. It will combust and get hot enough, long enough, for us to start a fire by applying our tinder. Another cool trick we can do with our military survival knife is use this knife and the tip of the knife to magnetize a needle to give us the ability to find cardinal directions by suspending that needle in a body of water and letting it rotate freely until we have a north-south running line. How we do this is we take a needle from our sewing kit and then we take our knife and we stroke one end of the needle and we stroke it in the same direction at least 100 or 150 times. While this works is that the tip of our knife has a negative charge because of the electrons in the metal. When we take that tip and rub it against another piece of metal, we are moving the electrons to one end of our needle. Now that needle is magnetized. We can place this on a piece of cork or on a leaf and then suspend it in water. Once we suspend it in water, we make sure it rotates freely and then test it to make sure it is polarized and wants to 
go toward the north or south pole. The tip that we actually magnetize is going to want to go toward the south pole and it will align itself on the north-south running line. We can compare our compass, find our cardinal direction, and ensure that we're on track. Now with our military survival knife or whatever knife we have on us, we should typically have other cutting items with us or other tools available that we can use out on the landscape for a variety of purposes. One of the tools that is common for military survival kits or those small survival kits or tins that you can get is going to be some sort of commando or wire saw. The commando saws that you get in commercial kits are crude and can snap on you if you don't use them right. This is an actual military commando wire saw that we can use out in the field to take down material. It's also strong enough to cut through metal. But it comes with these two rings. The rings on the ends, while they're strong, they're not going to be great or comfortable to use around one finger to saw material while we can't do that a time or two or three. What we can do now is take our survival knife and create additional material to give us a better grip or purchase on the commando wire saw to make it easier for us to cut. All we have to do is create toggles up the landscape from sticks, trim the ends, make them comfortable for use, and then go out, go to work, and cut down material for firecraft, for tool craft, for field craft, or different skills around camp, or things that we might need in our survival situation. Having small cutting items like this in our pocket and as part of our kit, especially real ones, could go a long way in survival and make the difference. Even without the aid of a mallet or a maul or a baton, we can still break open sections of material for firecraft getting to that dry material inside or material for carving a bow drill set or material for a one stick fire very easily using this different technique. All we have to do is take out our survival knife, turn it upside down, blade away from us, grab our section of material and find a log or a stump on the forest floor that we can use as a bushcraft anvil. We then take our knife tip, place it at the top of our log, lifting both the log and the knife at the same time, hammer into the anvil until we cause a fracture, and then we can continue this process down the log until we split that log in half. And then all we have to do now is repeat and break this material down into smaller and smaller sections for whatever we need. Speaking of one stick fire, let's take a look at how to properly break down a one stick fire for the portions and the fire material that we need. I saw a lot of guys struggle with this at the challenge at the Pathfinder Gathering and there were some good techniques and some not so good techniques. But let's take a look. Now the first thing with our piece of material that we have and we already split it using that no baton baton technique we now have a mallet or a baton that we can use to break down this material we break it down into basically four sections we want to have really skinny kindling size pieces that we want to use if we get that initial flame going and then we want to build up in size having smaller fuel size portions to moderate and then larger fuel size portions as we break down this material we can lay those sections out into our four different piles for a one stick fire now that we have our four piles laid out small medium extra medium and large we're going to grab those four piles put them to the side and then grab a couple of pieces from the material that is the largest and we're going to turn those into feather sticks we grab two of those sections and then begin creating feather sticks and or shavings it's okay if the feather sticks or the feathers fall off the stick we can just pile them up luckily it's a dry day out today and we don't have to worry about things being on the ground so much of note is that if we take our knife while we're creating feather sticks and turn the point up the feather sticks are going to shoot out to my left your right if we point the tip down as we create feather sticks the feather sticks are going to shoot out to my right your left just a technique that we can use to keep feather sticks on the stick and add more to our feather sticks now a technique as part of a one stick fire is to keep one of those sections that you use for feathers break off the feathers and then split that section again and create two more feather sticks with the feathers attached. The ones that fall off we can just add to the pile but we want to keep the feather sticks on these sticks because we're going to use them as kindling to help build the fire and get that flame attached to larger sections of material. We are now ready to light because we have appropriate material ready to go. We take our ferro, hit it right into the pile of feather sticks and the trick to this is to wait because we have those sparks landing on material it may take a second for that to actually combust and produce flame so we wait a second we can see it down in the pile the smoke will start building and then we'll see that flame as soon as we see the flame come above the 
feather sticks. Now we can grab those two feather sticks we created that are still on the sticks, lay them on top, grab our kindling, put them on top, grab the medium and the super medium items, lay them on top, and then grab our larger material and put it right over top of our fire, and we have our one stick fire complete. And of course a good skill to know when carrying a 100% carbon steel blade like the one we have today is using it as an alternate fire starting device with flint and steel. Because it is 100% carbon steel we can grab a piece of chert or flint off the landscape and then making sure it works, testing it on the back of our knife, glancing blows and driving small pieces of metal off the back of the blade turning them into sparks. We can use it with charred material, something that will take a very very fine spark and use it to get a fire going. We just pull that char material out, hit it with our rock, one and done, and then we have that char material lit that we can put into a tinder bundle and blow into flame. Another thing we can do is with an old-fashioned magnesium fire starter with that striker on top, we can use our knife yet again to actually get a fire going with this if we are left without a striker for some reason and we just come across this magnesium bar. We can use that 90 degree spine of our knife to begin grinding material off the magnesium bar. We want to get a leaf or something to collect up those fine shavings because they are so fine, just like me. We want to collect those so they're not scattered in the dirt, making it even harder for us to actually light that material. We continue hogging off material with our knife until we have a good size pile, like a quarter size pile of magnesium shavings. Once we're satisfied and we have all our fire material ready to go, we turn that bar around, we can then again still use that 90 degree spine of our knife, hit the striker until that material is lit, and then we have our fire. Too easy. One other trick we have up our sleeves is using the bottom of a match safe to get a fire going. A lot of match safes and civilian models are going to have that small ferro rod at the bottom. We can use that to actually strike with the tip of our knife to expose sparks to tinder and get a fire going. In this case, we can use a cotton ball. We just take a stick put it underneath the bottom of that match safe to elevate it giving us a better target area and then we put the tinder underneath that strike the ferro rod with the tip of our knife and we have fire we can also use this technique with man-made tinder as well something like wet fire in case we have that match safe the match striker is ruined and we can use that tinder and ignite it with the ferro serum rod using the same technique if we still have matches as part of our match case but the strikers are ruined or we lose them for whatever reason, we can do the same exact thing. We just take the matches out, grind them up into a fine powder, and then use the ferro at the bottom with our knife to ignite that powder. It'll burn fast and quick, but fast enough and strong enough to get a fire going if we have appropriate tinder at the ready. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. We're out here today. It is hot, heat index over 100, high humidity, and we're getting it done today out here with survival skills using our military survival knife or any knife that we can apply out in the field. I really hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for what you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.